How's it going everyone? It's Patrick here. I know it's been one hell of a long time since I last done a video. I just haven't had many opportunities or funds to buy savers, but since it's May the 4th, um, I got something very special here to review and show all of you. It is a vintage Graflex in the Empire Strikes Back configuration. Um, oh, shaking my camera a bit. But, um, yeah, this arrived in my mail today from Nate over at Iron Destiny Props. And <laughs> I'm pretty uh, giddy right now. Um, so I'm going to kind of break this video down in three parts. I'm going to go over just a brief history of the hilt. Um, then I'm going to go... Ah, I keep shaking my camera, my bad. Um, and then I'm going to go over all the components of the hill, and then I'm going to go over what my experience working with Iron Destiny Props was like. I feel those three things are important. Um, it's important for you to know exactly what the hill is all about, everything that went into it. And then, of course, you as a consumer should know what you're getting into when um, doing a commission through a company or prop maker. So... The Empire Strikes Back version of the Graflex is many people's favorites. Uh, many people like the double bot, the double bot, the double buttons, the black screws, and it's it's very interesting. It's the most unique Graflex in the series, with maybe the exception of the Reforged Graflex and Rise of Skywalker. But as far as just a full Graflex, it's definitely the most unique um it, it's very different from the new hope or the force awakens just because it has those two buns it has this chrome mylar tape it's very different um mine was based off of the hero prop that is seen most clearly when luke is on bespin and r2d2 is bumping up against his leg that is really the image i clung to um and it's definitely the most idealized arrangement of the parts in the film. Um, the rest of the props were pretty beat up or stunts, um, especially the Dagobah hilt, which that poor thing. So I really wanted a Cloud City hero, um, which is what Nate has graciously put together for me. Um, so let's 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 just go over this. So. This being a vintage build, what on here is vintage? What are the parts? Um, it is an ink pen vintage, which is different than the actual vintage they use in the films. They used, I believe, an early former, um, which has a different shine to it. A few of the components are different. So this makes it slightly inaccurate to the film. Um, the formers are a little bit shinier, where this is a little bit more matte. The pins in here on mine are... Come on, focus. There it goes. Um, the pins are stepped instead of long and smooth like they would be on an early former. Um, there, I, I believe there's a slight difference with the clamp bar here. And then the last difference is, of course, the stamping on a former has New York spelled out in its entirety, whereas these ink pens just have the initials of NY. Um, that really doesn't bother me. If I was doing a Wampa cave scene, I would want probably an early Fulmer to do the Wampa cave alignment. But since I was doing the Bespin hero, it didn't really matter to me. Everything else is still the way you would want it to look in the film. The buns, the bunny ears, the shape of the S-curve. Which, to my knowledge, not one single replica company has gone that S-curve perfect. Every single one has some sort of issues. Either it's too shallow or the plating isn't clean. Something. Um, as far as the rest of the components, the rest of the components are replica. Although I should mention that both of these buttons are vintage. And getting that second vintage red button was a nightmare. Um, but as far as the rest of the components, the clamp card is a Slaw Furnace vintage Otis card replica and then we have the uh t-tracks which i believe are todd's custom tracks um the difference between todd's customs and wanawanga grips 
is tides are a little bit more asymmetrical in their profile. Come on, focus. There we go. Um, so they're not as idealized, which is what I would want on a vintage hill. A little bit more rough, a little bit more, you know, offset. The D-ring assembly, the actual cobalt assembly is a Roman props. And the D-ring itself is a Wanawanga. And then I believe the chrome tape is from Wanawanga as well. So with the exception of the grips, D-ring, and clamp cart, everything else on this is vintage. The brass pins, the contact bulb, and you can just see like right there, hopefully the camera picks it up. You can see the nicks and dings and the weathering. You can see the brass patina, the weathering on that. Um, initially when I set out for this commission, um, we had a graphic shop, Replica Flash before I got hold of the vintage. And we had ordered uh, from East Coast Sabres a pair of weathered long pins. And I debated for a while about swapping these step ones out for the more accurate replica ones. Um, and they were weathered to look aged and everything. And I just decided I couldn't gut any vintage component out of this. Um, I felt like that was sacrilege. No one else would really know. I would know. And also that brass patina, that weathering, East Coast Sabres does it near perfect, like 99.9% .9 perfect, but there's still that 1% that you just can't replicate. You can't replicate 80, 90 years worth of wear. This flash gun is roughly 80, 90 years old, give or take a few years. And I want to retain as much of the vintage components as humanly possible. Um, Nate also, uh, per my request, Made sure that both the bunny ears and the D-ring were free moving. That was very important to me. A lot of people like those things to be stiff. They don't like them jingling around. I like hearing the sound of it. I like the movement. So Nate went through much effort to get that. The bunny ears were tricky. The bunny ear rivet was in there tight. Um, see if you can't see that. The, the weathering. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera all the little ding spots on on the hill um this particular um vintage flash gun i have to give a shout out to i hope i'm not butchering your name uh theo who sold me this he actually sold it to me for a very good price it was around 400 dollars, is i believe what i paid for it um and he very kindly held on to this vintage for me for about two weeks until I was able to get paid. Um, I was the very first person to message him on his listing and he very kindly held on to it. He didn't sell it to anyone else. Um, so big shout out to you and a big shout out to Derek for selling me the second vintage red button. Um, it was very tricky finding a second one and um, you, you both, both of you guys, you made a dream come true for me. So, yeah, it, it's heavy. Much heavier than I thought it'd be. Heavier than any replica. Um, I just love it. I, I Everything is perfect. Um, and I also made sure before I bought this vintage, I got numerous opinions from several people to make sure it was the real deal. It is common to get scammed in the Sabre community. It's common to get scammed with vintage replicas. Um, so I sent... All the photos before I even made the purchase to both Nate at Iron Destiny Props, uh, Matt at East Coast Sabres, a few other people just to get numerous opinions and all the opinions lined up that this was the real deal. The big tell on this was the brass patina on the pins and contact and the inside had heavy uh, corrosion and rust in the battery compartment that and the clamp section that you just can't replicate. This thing is perfect. Um, yeah, I don't have too much more to say. Unlike like a replica where I could talk about the quality of the replica, this is a vintage. You're not going to get closer to the actual prop than this. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Iron Destiny, the Iron Destiny props who put this together for me. Um, I first contacted Nate last July for a pair of grips. At that point, I had already sold my Core Banff 
because as I got more into this hobby and I learned more, um, I realized what I had that I thought was so great really wasn't. I wanted to go that extra step. Um, so I contacted Nate for some grips. And then as we just kept talking, um, we just decided we would have him put the entire thing together. Now, I did mine in a little bit of an unconventional way. I pretty much paid him for a new part every month. Um, he does not buy all the parts and then you pay him back. You have to pay him in advance and he'll order the parts for you or you already have to have the parts on hand to send to him. Um, he puts these hilts together. He does not make them from scratch. He doesn't make his own flash guns, stuff like that. He just does extreme accuracy builds in putting everything together. Um, accuracy is a big deal with him. Um, there were certain things about the Graflex hilts in the original trilogy I did not know. Um, so he's very knowledgeable. He's fairly quick to respond. You'll get a response at least within a day. Um, but due to me being on a fixed income, I really had to pay part by part by part, which was frustrating for him, was frustrating for me. Um, because we never knew what was going to happen with me money-wise, what was going to happen. There was one time where my truck broke down or was having issues and I had to get that looked at. So money was a thing, but he was beyond patient, beyond, beyond understanding. As long as you keep him in the loop, perfect. Communication is top notch. Um, his quality, as far as putting together, when I first decided I wanted to have a commission build, uh, my original intent was to have East Coast Sabres do it. At the time that I started this, Matt had taken, not he hadn't retired, but he had taken a hiatus. He wasn't taking on as many commissions. And at that same time, Shamim retired completely. So the two people I knew of who could build me a Graflex, an accurate one, backed out of the Sabre community. I didn't know what to do. And then I started seeing, uh, I'm on the Graflex Addicts group on Facebook, started seeing more and more from Nate started seeing some of his YouTube videos, and I was like, okay, this might be the way to go. He seems to know his stuff, and he does. Um, he, he's very knowledgeable, and the great thing about him, he's not one of those um, prop makers who's arrogant in the sense that he thinks he's right on everything. There were numerous times where I had questions. I didn't understand something, or I was wondering could something be done a different way. Instead of just going up and saying, no, this is how we do it, he would go, let me ask a couple more of my prop elder buddies and get second and third opinions and get a consensus as to what would work and what weren't. And I, that that is professionalism, being open-minded and open to suggestions. Um, we really came to that issue with the D-ring because I want to be able to hang this on my belt. I want to do a Luke Skywalker Bespin cosplay at some point in the future. This has to be able to hang from my belt. Um, Nate tries to do everything to where it's not damaging the flash gun. The screws are milled flat with the grips and then glued on. And he typically does something very similar from my understanding with the D-ring. After much debate, after him getting second and third opinions, after me getting second and third opinions, we came to the conclusion that it would be okay just to rivet these into the bottom. Since this is no longer a flash gun, it's a lightsaber. And we've already technically damaged it by having to mill off the beer tab. So he's very open-minded um, and very willing to work with you, do what you want. He, he'll he push for accuracy where he can, but at the end of the day, he makes it very clear that this is your prop. It's up to you. You're the customer. And he's going to do what, within reason, what you want him to do regarding your prop. So that is very professional. I deeply love that quality about him, how I didn't feel like I was ever being talked down to. Um, and he, he, he'll always send you like updated photos, um, or he'll do fun little things too. Um, I was not supposed to receive this today. We were still, according to him, waiting on these four millimeter, uh, rivets. They weren't supposed to come to the six, according to him. He lied. <laughs> he, he's had this done for uh, about a week now, I believe. And he mailed it out last Thursday. So it would arrive on Star Wars day. I was thrilled. Um, so he has a real sense of humor and he really goes out of his way to just make the customer feel appreciated and good and like they're getting the best deal. Um, that being said, not cheap.
Um, you have to buy all the parts yourself. If you want, you can have him order the parts for you. You have to pay him in advance. He'll give you an invoice and he only charges you for the cost of the part and the shipping of that part. Pretty much what you would pay if you were ordering it for yourself. So very fair in that regard, but he also charges you for putting everything together, making the grips, D-ring, milling the clamp car to be accurate to the films. There are fees for all that. After all, he has to make some sort of a profit. He does not do this for free out of the kindness of his heart, nor would I expect him to. Um, it's not exactly cheap. I don't remember off the top of my head how much outside of the parts that I paid him for putting it together. And mine had a bit of extra work. Um, he had to take this thing apart and clean it and preserve it to prevent further corrosion. It was heavily corroded on the inside. So I also had to pay him for that. Um, which is fair. He's putting in extra work. He should get paid a little bit more. I think that's perfectly fair. And he's very upfront. His prices don't waver and change. He's very upfront with everything. Um, and he's willing to go the extra mile. He didn't have to go through the hell he went through to get these bunny ears to move. He didn't have to make the D-ring swivel or actually rivet the D-ring to the hilt. That's extra. That's stuff he didn't have to do. And no questions asked, he did it. Um, he also, when you commission through him, he gives you a certificate of authenticity, which I wish more Saber Smiths would do. This protects him, this protects you, and this is how. Say I wanted to resell this and claim it was an Iron Destiny prop that I'm selling it for, you know, get a little bit of extra money due to the quality, I have proof. I have this certificate of authenticity, which I'll show in a second. Or say someone out there wants to scam someone and say that this is made by Nate. Well, where's the certificate then? So I think that's brilliant. I think that's a really good and smart move. I don't think I've seen that before from any prop maker you know, or commissioner outside of a company. Um, this is one man. Um, I think that is a great idea. He does charge you for the certificate. It is not optional from my understanding. Um, so you will be paying for that whether you want it or not. Um, and I think it's a great idea and it looks glorious. This is what the certificate actually looks like. It is laminated. It has this seal and this certificate goes over every single component in the hilt who made it everything it's signed by him let me just double check and see if there's anything else in this it names the prop being made and what's great is to know that this is really unique you can't just take someone else's certificate and use it for yours something he does on these certificates you see that photo of the graphics on there that's the photo of my hilt he puts the photo of your hilt on these certificates each certificate is different you're not going to be able to take someone else's certificate and pass it off as yours I think that's smart. Um, it's not made out of flimsy paper. It's made out of really good, like, laminated certificate paper. I can't wait to frame it, put it on my wall. Um, I think that's great. And it also gives me information. I've had people come to my house and pick up some of my other lightsaber props. And I'll kind of fumble over all the components of that prop. I had them all listed on the certificate, which is going to be framed next to this. So all the information is there. It, it's wonderful. Working with Nate has been an experience. Um, and I was really afraid because I've had bad experiences. Um, I've had bad experiences with big companies like 89 Sabres. I've had bad experiences with just one person, Sabresmiths. Um, so you never know what you're going to get. But this dude has a very good rapport within the uh, graphics community. He also does a Vader MPP hilts. Um, he even did a holiday special one recently, which I found hilarious that someone would want that. But hey, to each their own. I am thoroughly thrilled. I'm thrilled with my experience with him. I'm thrilled with his professionalism. I would highly recommend him. I am going to put a link to the Iron Destiny Props YouTube and Facebook pages down below. So if you want to see more of his work, or if you even want to do a commission, you can. Um, and if you're one of those people who has a vintage and you don't want to do the conversion yourself, but you're also afraid to send your baby off to someone, it's in good hands. He handled mine with extreme care. Um, and it's perfect. Um, I don't know if I really have anything else to say. 
Um, I still have my Graphlex Shop replica that Nate still has that was supposed to be used for this build before I got the vintage. I was going to use that for a new hope. I don't think I can. I don't think I can have anything other than a vintage now after owning one. It's it's the real thing. And I... Nate, man, if you see this video, um, which you probably will, thank you. Um, thank you for everything you've done, for working with me, and for your amazing work. Um, also, again, thank you to Theo for selling me the vintage and to Derek for selling me the second red button. Um... And I also want to give out a small shout out to Matt at East Coast Sabres. Whenever I wanted a second opinion, um, he was one of my go-to people for that. And his opinions always lined up with Nate's, which just reassured me on some things. Because as I said, you know, I didn't know all that much about Nate before I started this project. So thank you, um, Matt, for just helping me feel more confident with this. And Nate, man, you knocked it out of the park. I love it. It's now my favorite hilt in my collection i don't think i have much more to say um i'll be trying to do more videos in the future i have another lightsaber review i still have to do um i also want to kind of branch out and do reviews of other props from other things since i don't acquire sabers that often i kind of want to branch the channel out a bit but yeah that's that's all i got and uh happy may the fourth and hope you're all doing well. Stay safe out there.